2021. What a year it has been. After 2020 proved to be a year of great divergence, we had strongly hoped that 2021 would pan out to be a much more typical year, one that would give us more opportunities to continue our never-ending quest in search of steam. Our desire would reign true, as 2021 proved to be our busiest and most exciting year yet, taking us to many new places and meeting plenty of new people along the way. This year, Big Banana Productions documented a whopping 20 steam locomotives in 8 states, an all-time record that we never thought we'd be able to pull off. We covered a wide variety of steam power, from geared logging locomotives in West Virginia, to a massive foreign freight hauler in Iowa. From Van Swearingen Berkshires in the Midwest, to a striking Blue Pacific in Pennsylvania and capping off the year with a debut that's been a long time coming. In addition, we upgraded our camera equipment, giving our videos a smooth and more professional new look. With 2022 rapidly approaching, the time has come to reflect on all the great moments and memories we've made this year, and showcase the most captivating images that perfectly display the awesome sights and sounds of steam locomotives. Come along with Big Banana Productions on this exhilarating journey as we present the best of 2021. We started off the year in March at the Wilmington and Western Railroad in the Red Clay Valley of Northern Delaware, where we saw the railroad's 060 switcher number 58 opening the season with the Easter Bunny Express trains. The former Baltimore and Ohio branch line travels through some breathtaking scenery as it travels along the Red Clay Creek, crossing over several bridges and passing through tranquil forests. Here we watch as the Veterans Locomotive exits the Mount Cuba Rock Cut, a rarely visited location on the railroad. found us making a brief visit to the Valley Railroad in Connecticut for a photo event that was dedicated to the memory of Lee Carlson, a railroad employee and photographer who loved taking pictures of the Valley's trains as they traveled up the old New Haven line along the banks of the Connecticut River. The event featured Chinese-built SY Class 282 Mikado No. 3025, which put on a splendid show pulling a variety of consists. And here we see her stretching her legs during a photo run by at Chester, which was Lee's favorite photo location.
early May, we partook in a photo charter hosted by Laro Photography at the Cass Scenic Railroad in West Virginia, capturing dramatic images of geared logging engines in the mountain state's beautiful landscapes from rugged mountains to crystal clear rivers to lush meadows. We've had the pleasure of visiting Cass several times over the last few years, and this visit was no disappointment. The first day took place out of Cass, with former Maurer Lumber Company Shays numbers 4 and 5 on both logging and freight consists, fighting up the steep mountain grades to spruce before heading along the old Western Maryland line along Shaver's Fork. The second day featured ex Meadow River Lumber Company Heisler number 6 on a mixed freight consist, traveling along the Greenbrier River from Durban as far as the small settlement of Hosterman. Here are some highlights from both days.
A few weeks after Cass, we visited the New Hope and Ivyland Railroad in Pennsylvania, where 280 number 40 was seen pulling the railroad's regular excursion trains between New Hope and Lahaska. This was the first time number 40 had operated in the spring for several years, and she puts on a great show traveling through the lush woods of Bucks County. Day weekend found us at the Reading, Blue Mountain, and Northern Railroad in the Anthracite Coal region of Pennsylvania, where we were in for a fun weekend of steam activity. After spending Friday with X Golfmobile and Northern 462 Pacific number 425 on the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway out of Jim Thorpe, Saturday featured a rare treat indeed. Central Railroad of New Jersey 060 number 113 led a rare mileage excursion in benefit of veteran Reading and Northern engineer Chris Bost, who was diagnosed with CIPD, a rare nerve disease triggering pain in the arms and legs. The excursion ran from 113's home base in Minersville, Pennsylvania, to RNN's headquarters in Port Clinton, and was a thrill to see from both trackside and on board the sold out train. 113 performed miraculously as she raced down the former Reading trackage, and we see her crossing the Schuylkill River near Landingville, then winding through the rock cut at Marlin.
Sunday found us in Tamaqua, Pennsylvania, where number 425 was seen pulling excursions for the city's annual Summerfest. The trips ran south to New Ringgold and north to the hometown High Bridge. As always, the four and a quarter was a sight to behold, and we catch her at Zenner's, passing by a 1965 Ford Thunderbird, before charging up the stiff grays as she stormed out of Tamaqua Tunnel. In July, we paid a visit to the Everett Railroad to capture 260 Mogul No. 11 pulling the ice cream special excursions between Hollidaysburg and Roaring Spring, Pennsylvania. Although the skies were mostly overcast and rainy, it nevertheless made for a pleasant weekend of photography. Number 11 gets a grip on the wet rails as she charges around Reservoir Curve with her southbound train. found us embarking on one of our biggest adventures yet as we traveled to the Midwest on a five-day trek to experience steam in a setting brand new to us. We made several stops on our journey to photograph a few static steam giants, including the St. Louis Museum of Transportation, where one of the finest collections of railroad equipment in the United States can be found. The final destination, however, was Iowa. Here, we would embark on a multi-day chase of the Iowa Interstate Railroad's Chinese QJ Class 2102 No. 6988 as she traveled through the heartland on a series of excursions to benefit local fire departments. The first day featured 6988 on the point of a revenue freight train, while the following two days saw her pulling trips out of the towns of Oxford and Wilton, thrilling the crowds as she rocketed through the countryside. 
The small town rural setting adds to the charm of this railroad, and the Iowa Bolt feels right at home as she storms through the towns of Grinnell, Oxford, and West Liberty. Returning eastward, we headed to the Cuyahoga Valley Scenic Railroad in Ohio in mid-September to witness Nickel Plate Road S2 Berkshire No. 765 at the annual Steam in the Valley event. Traveling through the beautiful scenery of the Cuyahoga Valley National Park between Independence and Akron, 765 put on a spirited show, and it sure was great to see her in action again, having last seen her in the summer of 2015. We see her strutting her stuff at Deep Lock Quarry, just south of Peninsula, before powering up Akron Hill at milepost 42.
2021 found Norfolk and Western J Class number 611 making a second visit to the Strasburg Railroad in Pennsylvania. And we headed down to Amish country to spend a day with her roughly two weeks after seeing 765 in the Cuyahoga Valley. The Queen of Steam makes a grand entrance as she passes through Espenshade, bound for the East Strasburg Depot. day found us back at the Reading and Northern, where 425 led several trips out of Schuylkillhaven, Pennsylvania for the annual Borough Day celebration. Running to Port Clinton in return, the trains traveled through some very secluded scenery in the backcountry of Schuylkill County. In the early hours of the morning, 425 emerges from the mist as she passes under the old Pennsylvania Railroad Trust Bridge at Auburn. October, we spent four days with 425, capturing many great scenes of her leading the Reading and Northern's fall foliage excursions. Operating between Reading and Jimthorpe on the entirety of the railroad's Reading division, the Blue Pacific gave off some of the best steam shows we've ever witnessed. Her shattering stack talk and symphonious whistles echo throughout the surrounding mountains, and seeing her charge up the steep grades of Hometown Hill is a sight that enlightens the senses, making for one of the best steam shows in modern steam railroading. The fall colors were in full swing and added great imagery to the already breathtaking scenes. We see highlights from the four days of shooting 425 at some superb and hard to access locations, including the legendary Hometown High Bridge.
early November, Historic Transport Preservation held a pair of rail photo charters in Pennsylvania, showcasing the way it was during the golden age of steam-powered short-line railroads in America. Led by rail fan and photographer John Kraft, the charters captured the feeling of the early 20th century flawlessly with historic consists, period actors, and quaint scenes, reminiscent of those once common in a simpler time that has since faded into history. The first day took place at the Everett Railroad, with number 11 pulling a small mixed train typical of the locals that were once a regular sight on many railroads across the country. With some cosmetic changes done to the locomotive, along with period actors and vintage automobiles, the charter was a fantastic and memorable one. The scene is a brisk November day in the 1930s, and we catch a local train crossing the Juniata River before watching the daily flag racing in the small town of Roaring Spring. The second of the two historic transport preservation photo specials took place at the Strasburg Railroad, featuring former Norfolk and Western M-Class 480 No. 475 on a mixed freight train. The consist featured a wide array of Strasburg's authentic freight cars, and runbys took place at nearly every notable photo location along the iconic four and a half mile line, giving photographers in-depth coverage of the entire railroad. 475 reached some incredible speeds during the day, making for a captivating sight as she charged past the photo lines. Former Canadian National 260 number 89 was seen on the regular passenger trains, making several meets with the photo freight.
day after the conclusion of the historic transport preservation charters, Dynamo Productions hosted a photo charter on the Northern Central Railway, featuring some rare mileage and a Civil War theme, with period actors adding a late 1800s atmosphere to the scenes, including a trio of Union Army soldiers. 440 number 17 was the star of the show, and she gave off images of 1863 when President Lincoln traveled over this very route on his way to give the famous Gettysburg Address. Number 17 provides some dramatic steam to the scenes as she exits the historic Howard Tunnel and passes an onlooker at Glatfelter's. Heading out to the Midwest once again, we spend a weekend in Michigan with a motive to see the other Van Swerg and Berkshire in operation today. Pier Marquette N1 class number 1225. However, she is better known as the real Polar Express. We chase 1225 on the North Pole Express trains from the Steam Railroading Institute's home base in Owasso to Ashley, Michigan and she was decked out with white walls on her drivers for the occasion. Wind was a challenge on the first day with nearly 60 mile an hour gusts, but it fortunately gave way to clear sunny skies the following day. The contrast between the two days is shown in these scenes as 1225 fights through the fierce wind at King Road, before stepping into the sunlight at Baldwin Road.
chasing 1225, we made the decision to document two other Michigan steam operations due to their closeness and proximity, with one of them being the narrow gauge Huckleberry Railroad at Crossroads Village near Flint. The wind was still in full force here, as former Alaska Railroad 460 number 152 departs with the 4 o'clock train. Before heading home, we stopped by the Little River Railroad in Coldwater, Michigan for a rare opportunity to see two steamers for the price of one. For their Christmas trains, both 462 number 110 and 0410 number 1 ran in push-pull fashion, making for a very interesting operation. The locomotives were decked out in festive decorations, adding a merry feel to the chase. Thank <laughs> you. 
grand finale of 2021 was at the Western Maryland Scenic Railroad, as the struggles of a long and excruciating restoration finally paid off. Former Chesapeake and Ohio 2662 Malay number 1309 made her first public excursions on the Polar Express, running between a grandiose former Western Maryland Cumberland Depot and the iconic Helmstetter's Curve. Getting the chance to view this impressive piece of machinery in action at long last was one of the greatest and most rewarding experiences we've had the pleasure of seeing. And we see her proving her worth at the enormous rock cut at Bone Cave. As 1309 prepares to depart Cumberland on her last Polar Express runs of the day, we'd like to give a special thanks to our subscribers and supporters for coming along for the ride with us this year. It is our pleasure to have shared all of our great trackside moments with you, and we hope you'll continue to enjoy our findings for years to come. Thank you all for watching in 2021, and we will see you in 2022.